We all want the lowest latency of ping. With the advent of high-paced competitive multiplayer shooters like Apex Legends, Fortnite, and Overwatch, Call of Duty, there's so many, having the lowest latency possible is a must. And especially in fringe countries like us here in South Africa, where we often are forced to play on European or North American servers with around 140 to 230 milliseconds ping, because we just don't have a better option, and it's 140 milliseconds if you're lucky. This means that if you're a South African wanting to go professional in a game like Overwatch or CSGO, you better get used to that 170 millisecond latency to the United Kingdom as that is, is gonna be as good as it gets until some of those games get service here like CSGO but then again there's the whole argument about the competition pool being way too small for us to actually improve and get better so you have to play with better players abroad I have made a video on that as well it's about Fortnite uh, you can I'm linking that in the the information sign on the top right hand corner of this video. Yet what a lot of people do not know is that you can unintentionally make your experience worse by having a bad setup for your gaming. Having this bad setup will only increase your latency further and you don't want that. There are a few optimizations that you can make uh, to ensure what is happening in real time on your PC gets to the servers over in Europe or North America and back to your screen and then into your eyeballs as quickly as possible. So I thought I would give you five tips to help you reduce your input latency, ensuring you get the lowest latency possible to help reduce the no South African server handicap that most competitive South African gamers play on like myself. Note if you are from another country in Europe or North America or anywhere for that matter, these tips can also help you to improve your input latency on your side uh, and give you that slight competitive edge. It's gonna make a bigger difference for people that are further away. Number one, plug an ethernet cable in. Look, I know this sounds super obvious, but it surprises me how many people play competitive video games, whether it be on console or PC, on wireless internet connections. There is no comparison between ethernet and wireless connections, and ethernet cable always wins in the battle to reduce input latency. Depending on how good your internet setup is, playing competitively over a wireless connection could increase your latency by 10 milliseconds or more when compared to an ethernet cable. And in some extremely severe cases, you may even experience uh, stutter and lag spikes spikes because you know if there are a lot of people in the house that are using the internet it's it's an absolute mess and ethernet cables are more stable they don't have to go through walls or get interrupted by other devices or in some i don't know older routers situations like your um your spot on the router gets dropped like you don't want that so lose the wireless connection and go and find your ethernet cable in my house on and while we're streaming, we have an ethernet cable that's running from the lounge to the to the studio over here. It's 10 meters long. I can't compromise on that. It has to be wired. Number two, use a wired gaming mouse. Now, just a quick disclaimer here. There have been major improvements in wireless gaming mice, mouses. Always get this wrong. And a, a, a lot of newer models have little to no input latency. Like uh, Corsair's uh, slipstream technology is, is incredible. Like you'll have no input latency with that. Even so, a lot of older wireless mice have one millisecond to five millisecond input latency when compared to a wired mouse. Now you may be saying, what is one millisecond to to five milliseconds in the grand scheme of things. But remember, we're trying to make that 170 millisecond ping to a European server have as little impact as possible on your gaming. You can't change where the servers are, but you can change your setup. So every little bit of latency saving is gonna count here. Number three, don't play competitively on your TV if you have the choice. And again, the disclaimer here is that many TVs now have a gaming mode, which greatly improves your gaming response time. But for the majority of people who have normal TVs where the engineers create Creating them focus more on image fidelity than response time you are going to be putting yourself at a disadvantage if you play on your television and this includes console by the way tap your analog and see how long it takes for the characters to move on screen here's why most TVs have a very low refresh rate some are as low as 25 Hertz which is awful if you want to play smooth gameplay for multiplayer shooters and even with gaming modes activated the time it takes from when you move your mouse to the movement appearing on screen can be as much as 15 milliseconds in a couple of TVs. 15 milliseconds is a crazy amount of needless latency if you are comparing it to the most entry level of 1080p 60 hertz gaming monitors, which usually have response times of under one millisecond. So if you can, ditch the TV and plug your gaming rig into a, a, an under one millisecond response time gaming monitor. The first time this actually affected me anecdotally and I noticed what a huge difference it made was when I started doing this 
career. I was still living at home and my parents were using the television to, I don't know, watch Issy Dingo or I don't know what they were doing. Neighbors. <laughs> and uh, I had to play long form games like Assassin's Creed uh, in my bedroom. So I ended up buying a monitor for my desk and I've never looked back. If I have to play on a television, it's because I'm playing with friends or I just want to hang around mates that are playing with me. Uh, if I'm playing like seriously or competitively and I need as little input latency as possible, I will be playing on a monitor. Number four, ensure that you have no background processes running on your PC, which may affect your latency. And this includes DRMs like Steam, Origin, Uplay, and epic downloading updates and games in the background. There's usually a setting that uh, you can tick just to stop or throttle these DRMs from using internet bandwidth during gameplay, but sometimes there isn't. Be aware of it. Also, just take note of Windows updates and your antivirus. These guys are often sneaky enough to not notify you that they are doing something to your internet. I know, those, those are the worst. A and it is only after some searching uh, through your control panel or your task manager that you'll notice these guys, what, what they've been up to on your machine. Just press Control Alt Delete and you can click on Task Manager and find it there for yourself. If you're pretty savvy, I recommend that you can set these to certain update times so that they don't update during the times that you're scrimming or you're playing uh, you're, you're playing your games. If you have a lot of people that are using your internet connection, uh, watching Netflix and YouTube and the like, there are two solutions. You can upgrade your internet to something lightning fast, often that costs money. <laughs> or if you're a techno whiz, you can limit the bandwidth given to streaming services. This option can either be found on the streaming service itself or the much harder way, it can be done through your router but that needs a university degree or a phone call to your ISP. Look, it's possible, just Google it. There's, there's a way to do it. I know some friends are probably face palming now because they've told me to do it many times and I just don't want to get near my router. I don't want to, I don't look underneath my, my router's dress. It's just not what I want to do. It's my router just should just work. Number five, stay away from any application that claims to boost or optimize your internet connection. They're not always great and often they do nothing. And at worst, they can actually slow down your internet or PC and they can introduce more latency. Windows 10 already has functionality to optimize your PC and internet connection. So you don't need third party bloatware, clogging up your PC, probably monitoring your activity and just generally being all around a disaster. So in conclusion, let us take the worst case scenario for each tip that I've listed before and add them together and see how much added latency you could potentially have if you were not to optimize your system, okay? So 10 milliseconds latency for the wireless internet connection plus five uh, milliseconds for the wireless mouse, uh, worst case, right? Plus 15 milliseconds for the slow response time TV, uh, and plus let us say five milliseconds for the DRMs and five milliseconds for the software optimizers, which is actually generous given that if a DRM Windows update or antivirus is updating or uh, an internet optimizer is being in some way intrusive, it could bring your internet to a standstill. Nevertheless, in total, you could expect with all of the above stuff up to 40 milliseconds extra latency in a worst case scenario. Even if you were playing on a local server with a latency of under 10 milliseconds, that means that you could, you could have an increased latency of up to 40 milliseconds, which is insane. Note, this is just an estimate and it's, an, it's like a stack of all the extremes, but I just wanted to show you why optimizing your input latency is important and the effect that a bad setup can have on your response time and gaming performance is potentially steep, especially if your country does not have local servers in many competitive shooters like South Africa. But here's hoping that Overwatch gets South African servers and we've got some South African servers for Rainbow Six Siege. So that's been great. It's been great to play on 10 milliseconds. Anyway, I hope this helped. And let me know in the comments if you can think of anything else that I didn't include in these top five things. And if there are ways that uh, you think that it can improve or if you think that I'm wrong, even even just throw those out there. I wanna hear what you have to say. Again, that 40, 40 millisecond thing is just like the definite worst case scenario of every single one of those things is function, functioning uh, uh, as worse as they can. Functioning, that's a, that's a new word that I've just invented. As worse as they can and they're stacked on top of one another often that won't be the case so you might you might be saving in most cases five ten milliseconds depending on how well your machine is optimized but we need it and we need it in these regions i'll see you guys in another video cheers